On the breakfast, uh, World Bank has lowered its economic growth forecast for Nigeria in 2023 to 32% to 3.2% from 3.3%, citing a slowdown in the global growth, the war in Ukraine and the declining demand in from China for commodities produced on the African continent. Look at this as it affects the Nigerian economy. Also on the breakfast, the organization of the petroleum exporting countries, OPEC, and its allies set to cut output as oil prices increases. What is the implication for an oil-dependent economy? And of course, we also have a daily look at some of the headlines on the front pages of today's national dailies. We call it Off the Press. All these and more ahead on the breakfast. Very good morning to you. We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, reaching you live from our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. I am Kofi Bartels. My name is Messi Boko. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Thursday morning. Yes, indeed. Um, lots to talk about. Uh, fantastic uh, lineup of topics uh, with a hint or a slant towards the economy or bias towards the economy, I'd say. Um, we'll be looking at that. We have a crack panel of guests set to do justice with analysis on these topics. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. Maybe have a cup of coffee or something as you're getting ready for your day. Um, but before we go into the major conversations as usual, let's start with a look at what has been trending in the social sphere, the social, social space. And uh, of course, the conversations going on there. Um, Nigerians like to air their views you know, on a lot of things. And uh, it's, it's only Nigerians in Africa that are able to you know, create global trends and the entire world takes notice. Um, now, one of the th trends we, we were monitoring yesterday, we had a lot of conversations about that Messi. Of course, you know, the, uh, the wife of the president, uh, some prefer to call her the first lady, even though the president said she's not the first lady, she's his wife, but there's an office of the first lady, there's a budget for that office, so <laughs> some people prefer to call her the first lady. Um, she said that, this is kind of surprising, that... Uh, her husband suffered from PTSD for many years. This is a post-traumatic stress disorder, disorder. for many years. Um, she narrated how she played a role of physiotherapist for him. Um, and of course, uh, said a, a number of things and people had to react to this. Um, quite, quite, quite interesting for, for her to be this open about things. It's not something you always see. Um, post-traumatic stress disorder is quite 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 a very serious uh, 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 issue for a lot of people, you know, when they, whenever they go through things. Um, but what is the reason behind his PTSD? Because there's always something that triggers PTSD, you know, as a human being. Maybe you went through uh, an experience, a bad experience, and each time you're around uh, something that reminds you of that, you begin to have some stress. Now, she said that he, he had this PTSD for many years following his involvement in Nigeria's civil war, you know, without rehabilitation. Also, his overthrow as military head of state and subsequent detention for 40 months. People don't know, uh, a lot of people don't know, I will say remember that, but a lot of people do not know uh, that Buhari was detained for 40 months, you know, without being uh, charged with any offense, you know. So what she, she said that is a lot of people do not know, and not too many people, um, that he suffered this PTSD. You know, and she also said that uh, his loss of three consecutive uh, elections further complicated the situation uh, she was confronted with at 19, the age of 19, uh, when she married him and therefore became the unintended physio or, or psychotherapist, I think you should say that, a psychotherapist for his recovery. This is quite remarkable, Mercy. Now, she was... Um, uh, a special guest of honor at the groundbreaking ceremony of the Armed Forces Post Traumatic Stress Disorder Center. So that's uh, a good one there. And this was initiated by Mrs. Lucky Rabo, who is the wife of the Chief of um, Defense Staff, General uh, Lucky Irabo. Uh, so they have what they call um, Defense and Police Wives Association, the POA. Uh, a lot of people know about POA. I'm sure you remember the POA center in, in, in one city, you and I know. <laughs> uh, so this is the POA, Mercy. 
um, she said that she suffered the consequences of that PTSD at a very young age, you know, and the early stages of her marriage to the president. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's what she said. She also chided, have some words, some strong words, so politicians, you know, who, when they lost the primary election, they become almost inconsolable. Some of them, you know, become unreachable, switching off their phones and everything. Uh, but this is quite remarkable. Now, some people have taken to social media to talk about this, um, not in a good way. You know, some saying maybe that's why the economy is the way it is and all that. <laughs> but, you know, these are personal, where people become what they call, I think the, the, the language that people, people use today is vulnerable. Um, I, I don't like the use of that word vulnerable because it, it, it wasn't that before. We used to say vulnerable, but that's what people say. If you become vulnerable, uh, which is you, you open up, you know, you can just be a human being for, for once and just tell people how you feel, you know, without shielding anything or covering anything or clouding anything up. Just be yourself. You might even cry, you know. She has opened up to the people. It's remarkable. So, so yes, I, I mean, that's very remarkable because, uh, first of all, we're used to the phrase or the cliche mm -hmm. that says uh, experience is the best teacher. And, you know, evolving, I would say that leveraging on other experience or other people's experience will be the best teacher. And, for instance, the you talked about the openness and at that point, especially you would say that she's a public figure, especially that she's married to... Uh, you know, the president, right? So uh, the, the fora, if you look at the fora where she shared this, it's very apt because it was at the, you know, center where uh, you have, uh, it's, it's a center for PT, SD. PTSD, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think it was very necessary and it's very bold and courageous of her, you know, to put out that experience right there. Talking about mm -hmm. being a wife, you know, to a military officer, you know, way back then at her young age. She said she was 19 and that's really very encouraging. So I think that a lot of people should actually, for those who were sharing, you know, that um, experience with at the time, we should learn from, you know, what she went through Absolutely. and how she was able to handle it. Absolutely. And she talked about mm -hmm. handling uh, someone who's actually been the head of state and being yes. overthrown, yes. Uh, getting involved in the military, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, being detained and everything that happened, fighting civil war and what have you, without any rehabilitation. It brings us back, you know, to the conversation of the military. I must say this is commendable of, you know, uh, the, the wife of the defense uh, minister, what has been done. Because if you look at it, the, 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 this, the this of, mental chief illness, of defense staff. Chief of defense staff. If you, if you look at this, uh, it's something that happens especially, I mean, this is a different issues, but mostly you find uh, the post-traumatic stress disorder uh, with uh, military officers. They go through all of that because of the, you know, their involvement in protecting the territorial integrity. And that's, number one, very commendable. But on the other hand, I also think that... Uh, uh, you know, where she actually spoke on politicians who are already feeling some type of way losing out for the primary elections. When you compare that with her husband at the time who has lost several elections and all that he's gone through, everyone does not have, you know, the same mental capacity. And usually in the mental, you know, health talk and uh, encouragement or whatever it is, the session, uh, you have people not saying there's no need to be a hash on the people because like I would say your mental capacity and my mental capacity is not the same and some people can go through some things and come out very tough but others cannot they will you know, break down so if you have some people who are losing it, it is not easy to feel uh, you know, especially but that's why over time I've talked about have you also looked at it if you look at it all, every other time you see that people commit suicide school student they say oh uh, they, they left a suicide note because they were unable to you know meet up with their grades and performance in school and that's because we have not been taught to understand that failure is part of the part of life yeah. we need to understand that we will fail at some point and so um, that's it basically. I think that it was good, but to say that, oh, you lost the primary and you're already feeling very traumatized, come on, you need, you need to you know, do better. You know, um, it, this is really deep. This is really deep. It, it's, um, you know, the, the first lady has a way of, of, of being open, being, being honest, you know, and I, I hope that history will be kind to her. Um, Aisha Buhari, I hope he should be kind to her. I mean, I know the, her husband's um, leadership of the country has not been exactly sterling. Uh, but she, she has a way of once in a while coming out of, 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 uh, of silence or breaking a silence to say things that um, hit home. I do remember when there, uh, there was an issue with the Asurok um, uh, 
clinic. Yeah, she came out to say that uh, there, there, was no, there was nothing there. I mean, she had everything to lose in saying there was nothing there. Uh, she's been at loggerheads with people in the presidency, we'll call it that, uh, over whether you know, things are being done right. She's come out to take stands that you wouldn't expect a president's wife to take, at loggerheads even with the administration. Recently, when she was given an appointment you know, to head the women's uh, uh, you know, campaign of the APC presidential uh, uh, a campaign, we'll call it that, um, she apologized to Nigerians on behalf of her, her husband. You know, she apologized to Nigerians. So she's always taking, you know, uh, uh, sort of a, 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 a ground of um, honesty, you know, from time to time. I mean, I know Nigerians uh, bashed her when she, she put, put, shared a picture of um, her daughter-in-law's uh, graduation. But hey, she's a mother. Maybe these are things, and maybe she's also social media savvy. She's not a professional politician. Maybe she doesn't she understand the implications. I, I had nothing against her. Because nobody, nobody, nobody that too much tell us to make them go strike. <laughs> Yes. I like it you when you, you try so to, you, you know, the, 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 yeah, 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 she English. has no hand in that. It's so difficult. You know, <laughs> but, but I think that for some of the things she's actually said, you know, you don't expect firstly to be that open. Now, what she's putting out, now imagine someone Mercy being, getting married at the age of, clocking 19, all right, in your husband's house. That's your first marriage. You clocked, that means you went there before you were 19 years. This person is a soldier, rose up to the rank of general, all right, um, fought wars, not one war, at least two wars. Joined the army at a very early age, became head of state at a young age, and was deposed in a coup. And then the person was in prison for 40 consecutive months. And when he came out, the first thing he did was, you know, the first person you met was him as a newly wedded wife of 18 going to 19. That's a tough one. Yeah, that's what that's, that's why I talked about. One. We need to move on. And, and, uh, but, and, but that's why I talked and, about. And what I, what I, just before we, we do that, so what I'm saying is it's, it's a deep one. Um, it shows, I think, we need to put or give more attention to the, the mental and emotional state of our soldiers. Very if, important. If, if you see the way the soldiers behave, uh, some of them, especially those who are in the barracks for a long time, they don't come out, um, you realize that there's a lot going on. Uh, so so we, I, we I think we don't that have, it, Yeah, sorry, Max. We don't have the... Uh, the, the mental, emotional state of our um, servicemen, as well documented as we have that of, let's say, the Americans. We all know they have studies, they have uh, congressional hearings. It's even made movies about it, about what they go through when they go to wars. The veterans, when they come back, they have a lot of stress. Some of them, a lot of them are homeless. In the United States today, you see them homeless. They can't reintegrate in society because of the trauma you know, of some of the killings, the shootings, and everything. So it's important. We don't have time, like you said. Yes, it's, we, it's, we it's don't important. have time, but we, I think we, that we, we, we also have, have another sorry, conversation. Just, just to learn, it's important that what she has said, you know, people need to now look at it better, and we need to do more. And uh, like you said, uh, we commend the, 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 the military or defense and prison, uh, police officers wives association for putting this together. It's very commendable. Very, very yeah, commendable. Yeah, yeah. But we move on. away, and that's why we talked about, uh, you know, leveraging the uh, fora which she expressed her thoughts very apt. And I'm hoping that those who were around would actually leverage on uh, the knowledge and the experience that she's put out there so you know how to handle. Paraventure, you're married to, you know, an officer or whatever it is. I'm sure that you would learn one or two from that. Even if you were not there, it's okay to read up and learn from her experience. That's one thing. Uh, we also have another on the top trending, and that has gotten a lot of people talking. Nigerians can be very sarcastic. You need to go on the social space, especially Twitter. That's where all of the thoughts are. Former acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Magu, has been exonerated over the claims that he was involved in money laundering at the end of the day. I mean, we're talking about aiding uh, and laundering 573 million naira. Now, that has been cleared according to a judgment that was put out. However, it was stated that there was an error. Long and short of the judgment is that, you know, it was banking error that happened. The bank has actually written to say, oh, this happened because we're having an upgrade. It wasn't that he transacted or he paid a certain amount into that account, and that's been resolved. But as always, it would not really sit well with a lot of people. And so thoughts are that, oh, really? Is this where we are? Um, you know, some people feel that the judiciary or uh, the 
has not been very honest with some issues. But there are other persons who also believe that. Ibrahim Magu has been cleared of every allegation, I mean, every issues that he's been uh, charged with or accusation, however you, put it, you look at it. But uh, some people are asking that what is really wrong with the, uh, uh, the Minister of Justice? Maybe he should have some, you know, question to answer. It's possible. I mean, these are conspiracy theories that possibly that he was going after, uh, you know, heavyweights, political heavyweights. And that wasn't sitting down with those persons and then uh, he needed to be put out right there. But it's a good thing to say that he's been exonerated. I mean, if that's anything to go by. Hmm. Uh, Messi, you know, this is a pro it's a one where people ask, you know, when they say, uh, there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, so well, it's the, not the question, well, it's not the fire that has the, that yeah, comes so to the smoke. Qu the qu yeah. So the question <laughs> to ask is: Is this um, one of those fires that has there smoke or fire behind I was the smoke? To know that there was smoke. You know, that, that's what we don't know. So people ask, you know. But um, it's interesting to note that the, there's a, a, a preacher, a man of God, somewhere in this story. Uh, I know. And if you remember, there was uh, uh, some revelation. You know, even sort of a media media trial, if you want to call it that of Ibrahim Magu at the time when it was revealed that he had wired about um, 573 million naira into the account of this preacher. You can see him there. Uh, he is the general overseer of divine hand of hand of God prophetic ministry. Um, so they're saying that then the allegation was that he wired 573 million naira to this man's account. You understand? To this man's account. And that uh, this money was meant to be used or was used to buy a, a property in the United Arab Emirates, specifically Dubai, is what the allegation was at the time. So uh, this is basically the court saying, because there was a panel uh, led by Justice Milord Emir Justice Issa Salami, uh, set up by the presidency to investigate this, these allegations. And around the time, the president was in and out of the country. So... Uh, the vice president was, was acting in his capacity. And I remember at, there was a point where Magu had several uh, screenings, or uh, uh, what do you call it again? Yeah, they had to screen him and question him and all that at uh, the, the banquet hall of Asirok Villa. He, was, he went through a lot at the time. So this, this seems to be a vindication for him. It's taken some time. You know, it, the question to ask is justice that has taken this long, is it denied? I don't think so. They say justice delayed is justice denied, but um, maybe this is not justice delayed. It's, it's a case of the wheel of justice turned slowly. Um, it's taken a while to vindicate him. And interestingly, the, the, they say in the bank has admitted that there was an error in its uh, records. You know, there was an error in its report to the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, which revealed that uh, the ex EFCC chairman paid that one 573 million naira into the man of God's account. You know, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure the man of God must have been like, ah, what is the connection between Mango and that man of God? <laughs> you know, um, so, so, and for me, I've always thought about this. You know, Mango is, um, is the head of the EFCC. As head of EFCC, you don't wake up one day with all the intelligence you have, you must be very stupid. Sorry to use the word, but you must be very one of the most stupid people to. Just carry 573 million naira and wire it to, to uh, someone's account, you know. Because at the end of the day, if there's some sort of probe, it'll be seen. Okay, what happened? Now, so what he's saying is that um, the, the bank, names withheld, <laughs> have to admit that there was an error in its report to the Nigeria Financial Intelligence Unit uh, regarding that amount, you know. The judge also held that the bank claimed that the purported 573 million naira was wrongly reflected as credit in the account of the divine hand of God prophetic ministry uh, by its reporting system, which it recently upgraded. I don't know if they so I don't know if the, if his account balance changed because that's the kind of miracle I'm praying for as well. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the kind of miracle I'm praying for too. In, well, I, I'm, I'm praying for a better miracle. But hey, you know, if you wake up one day and see 573 million naira credit. You know, we need to move on. You know. So, Mercy, I mean, but this whole story, so it, it's, it's strange. It is really strange. I, I understand. I but, mean, but, but, but how do you was, explain it now? But it was the, the man of God who sued and his wife who sued the, uh, the bank. And uh, the, the judge had ordered, has ordered, I think, they pay uh, 540 million naira in damages. That's actually 540 million, 500,000 naira in damages to the preacher, which is remarkable. So, that was his lucky day. 
that that mistake that that happened is lucky he's now five hundred forty million five hundred thousand naira richer isn't that amazing mm -hmm. that's, that's remarkable. I, I don't know what, that's but, but we need to move on to mm -hmm. the next one yes 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 all right um this happens to be uh very quickly this happens to be uh, a sort of an open letter uh written uh regarding the the situation in the armed forces. I've, I've looked at it. It was written by Sahara reporters. And you know we are quite careful when we refer to Sahara reporters. But it seems to be exclusive. And the... the uh, but but it, there's a letter there. Yes, there's a letter that was typed in. So they just said they have it. I'm sure the person sent it to them. This is uh, said to be uh, uh, a personnel of the Nigerian army who penned an open letter uh, to President Muhammad Buhari and is demanding improved welfare improved uh, welfare for members of Nigeria's armed forces. He put his name there as Sergeant Ismaila Ukuchodu, um, but I think that is uh, maybe he, he didn't put his real name there to hide his identity. I have been looking at that name since yesterday. Whether it's Kudochuku, I don't know. But it says the military analyst, Federal Republic of Nigeria. So this is what he says. He says, um, uh, soldier's salary leaves much to be desired. He's addressed an open letter to the president. As a trustee of the armed forces of Nigeria, I humbly wish to address this letter to you who called us to serve the nation. The Nigerian army is the land uh, component of the armed forces created to defend and maintain its territorial integrity and ex from external aggression uh, and act in aid of uh, civil authorities. What's the thesis, thesis of what he's saying? He says, the Nigerian army feels in their responsibility and duty to meet the benefits and services of soldiers, not minding the consequences it will breed with time. Um, and he puts out, he says, painfully, we buy uniforms, boots, and other military kits from the same salary to serve Nigeria. Below is a salary breakdown for soldiers per day and per month, you know. And he puts it as, you know, it's, I don't know if we can put it on the screen, but it says, warrant officer salary, 95,000 naira for 31 days, that's a month. You break it down, uh, per day, it's uh, 33,064 naira per day. For people who have been in service for 28 years, you know, staff sergeant salary, 84,000 naira for, per month. That's 2,709 naira per day. Uh, sergeant salary, 68,000 naira per month. Corporal salary, 62,000 naira per month. Lance corporal salary, 57,000 naira per month. And private salary, 50,000 naira uh, per month. Now, he says to meet financial needs, soldiers involve themselves in illegal duties, sabotage arms and ammunition deals, uh, armed robbery, and kidnapping. He says to meet the the uh, financial needs the soldiers are engaged in kidnapping you know this is quite 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 uh, worrying mercy um it says the insensitive negligence to enhance salary and welfare of soldiers is a cause of mass resignation of trained troops you know that some time ago there was uh, some sort of mass resignation so sir the day soldiers will demand their right will be a sad day for the nation on that day all moral sanctity would have been lost this is a, a warning and um, we don't want to see such a day you know, I, I, I don't know what your interpretation of those wordings are, you know, but just 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 to add that if you look at this in the context of how much has been spent, you know, in terms of monies budgeted for the Nigerian army in particular um, since this administration came in and also before they came in, in, in addition to the loans that have been taken for the war against the terrorism, it's quite sad to see. Yeah, really sad to see. And, and that's why, first of all, I think that the president and everyone involved should actually, you know, pay attention, you know, to this concern that's been raised, uh, probably an investigation, because uh, he's also requested that there be an investigation uh, to all of this. Now, but I would say that this is not a justification. The statement that has been made quite uh, an indictment, indicting um, the military personnel, I mean, that's a lot of it. And it's a good thing. However, we, we're trying to understand the combination of the names, Ismaila and the other name. No, it's, well, it's, it doesn't, it's, it's, it doesn't it's really like telling sound... me you want to understand the name of, uh, <laughs> uh, what's this guy, this uh, Namdekano's guy again? Uh, so so, so let, let, let's move on. But the I'm just saying, if you look at uh, it, uh, you, you, all it, people it just been... use, use aliases just so that they hide the identity. The identity, but we understand. But I'm thinking that this is a very strong indictment. And if you were that, it's his identity... One. His identity can actually be, you know, be revealed. I'm sure that he will be apprehended, and he ha would have to answer for a lot because that's that's so much to actually spill. But if you look at it, is is, is that a justification? I understand that yes, the military 
uh, with the consents that they have put out and with the fact that you have people who are already in the system and from every other testimonial that you get to, you know, with interaction with this personnel, it's nothing to write home about. We've also seen veterans who are also protesting for some payments. I mean, recently, last week we talked about it, some allowances that they are due for and, and what they are supposed to get maybe even after they are no longer in the service and what have you. But I would say that it's not a justification for, uh, you know, involving in sabotage, crime and all of that, especially when you swore an oath, you know, to protect the country. Listen, and that's what listen. it is. Oh, oh, no, oh, Kofi, but let me land. You, you know, know, yesterday we talked about the teachers. <laughs> I also want to and say well, one sentence. No, no, no. <laughs> well, well, let me finish. So okay, uh, my point okay. here is it's yeah. not a justification. If not, let's all of us, you know, go in into sabotage. I mean, I, I, it, it's, it's as good as saying you and I should go carry arms. Because I, do, I don't really see any, if there's any administration, I mean, any profession where, you know, people are properly taken care of. Let the teachers get into the street, carry arms, sabotage, begin to steal and thief. Or, I mean, steal, get into robbery, kidnapping, and what have you. The teachers should go in. Now we already see they're complaining. They're not properly taken care of. I mean, they are not, everybody should go. You and I, the medical doctors. So but, you, but you're saying it's, is, not, it's not justification? No, there's no justification yes. for so committing for, for, a crime. So for someone to commit we a crime. Can, I, I, and because they earn uh, how much a, a day again? Um, no, but Kofi, I'm saying that if, if that's a, a justification, so, 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 right, so, so let's, all, let, let's all get into I, the street I, and pick I, up arms and become kidnappers. Of course, and I, I know that. I, uh, that's one of the things I also say from time to time. So, um, can I can I speak Pigeon? All that one, that grammar. <laughs> <laughs> that grammar. No, Kofi. Because, because at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a situation that has come about because the people who have these weapons and who are trained to kill, are not being paid well and they've decided to do the wrong thing okay but when you want to look for a solution you address the root and this guy all right has given people the the the, the president the opportunity to be aware of what has happened maybe he's not aware and like I said, all I want that grammar. While you are talking about it, the things are happening. So what do what do we do? No, so that, that's we what me I'm saying. Sure me, that, I'm also that, saying that, that, that I understand that, that, that this, this situation is, this is, is addressed case, immediately. But it's like you can't take the laws into your hands. Yeah, but and while we're while we're saying it, coffee, what is the, coffee, what is the coffee, effect? Imagine, imagine that every other person. What we're saying is is wrong. No, I sympathize we can't with what the military, even with the police, are they going to listen to you? And every other sector is going to. Are they going to take your But I'm saying that if that's the case. Let you and I and medical doctors, the teachers and everybody get to the streets. We pick arms, no we problem. become arm robbers, you don't have we arm to pick. and do stuff. You, they, you don't have arm Are you to sure? pick. They have, they have <laughs> the arms. Do you have arm? Do you have to shoot? <laughs> you never can tell. If you now, I'm sure you'll jump through this roof. What I'm, we, we, what we I'm need saying to go is that, what I'm saying is that, that it, it's really worrying. I know. Honestly, especially with the fact that we need to go. Junior, so, to junior soldiers now are the ones conducting the, uh, the coups around. West Africa. We'll talk about that. Thank you so much he, for he, being with his us. Last, his last paragraph should be uh, should, is something to, look, to watch out for, you know. So let's pray nothing happens. I mean, and that's it. Know. On Off the Press, I beg your pardon. We will take a break now. When we return, we'll be looking at the front pages of a national daily. So we call it Off the Press. Stay with us.